Hey, so something that people have asked me for a lot is a basically a step-by-step -step instruction uh, video on how to get Siri Proxy up and running. Uh, so I decided that I would go ahead and do that by creating a virtual machine uh, running Ubuntu 11.10 and going from start to finish. Uh, and as it says here in my little cheat sheet, uh, all I did was install Ubuntu 11.10, uh, I got all the available updates, I added the VirtualBox add-ons because I'm running this in VirtualBox, uh, and I set up SSH, uh, and that's just for the SCP at the end, you actually don't need to do that, uh, probably. Uh, and I want to be, I want to make it very clear, I've done nothing else to this virtual machine. So this virtual machine is very, very fresh. Uh, so the first thing that I end up doing is I install the prerequisites. And the vast majority of these, you know, DNS mask, Ruby, are really the only two that are, that are, some, that I basically came up with. Pretty much everything else comes out of RVM. When you run RVM, and I'll point it out later in the video, you actually get output that tells you what else needs to be installed. Uh, I'm just skipping the middleman and just going ahead and installing it all right up front. So I'm going to first do that. And it wants my password. So it says it's going to need 80 megabytes of space. That's totally fine. Uh, and this is just going to take a minute. Uh, so the overall steps to this is are you uh, first you install DNS mask, uh, you get that configured, then we install RVM um, and we get that configured, uh, then we install Siri proxy and we get that configured and then we're basically done. Uh, it's very quick and easy. Uh, you might actually just be able to run this, like, you know, give it a little uh, pound uh, exclamation point bin bash or whatever and uh, go ahead and just kind of run this file. I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't actually tested that uh, and it kind of does a lot of stuff so probably not. And it would take you quite a while too. Um, especially this uh, RVM install 193 actually takes a uh, takes several minutes to run. We'll probably fast forward through that portion of the video. Uh, but as we can see things are still chugging along here on Ubuntu. Um, I should be finishing up here in just a moment. Let me scroll back up and get the next command. Come on. Maybe I should have just played music over this video. I don't know. It's not very exciting. Alright, that was totally boring. But next thing you need to do is uh, run uh, vi dns mask conf or dns. Uh, Etsy slash DNS mask conf, and I actually have the keystrokes in here. You do address equals um, a enter uh, address equals gazoni.apple.com slash, and then this is your IP address, uh, the IP address of the machine um, that you're running on. Uh, in this case, it's 2.131. Um, and uh, if you're not sure what that is, you can type ifconfig, and it actually gives it to you right there. Uh, it's the one that's ADDR. Um, so uh, once you're done modifying that from DNS mask, you actually have to restart it. Um, so here we are restarting. Next thing we want to do is install RVM. Um, sorry, the 
copy paste keystrokes are different on my Mac and than the Linux box, but we'll get it. So we're installing this, and here's uh, what I said about so additional dependencies. Um, there's right here where I got pretty much all of those apt-get things, uh, and this is you know you should you should make sure to install these. It's apt-get in Linux. Um, you would use like port uh, Mac ports or something in uh, on a Mac. Uh, it's kind of you just kind of kind of know what's going on uh, in order to get the rest of those dependencies. And I think what happens is if you don't get these, you get some really strange errors going forward, uh, especially about Zlib. You get this weird Zlib error if you don't install Zlib. Uh, so I highly recommend um, you know making sure that all that just gets installed. Um, and then this is just telling it to now and going forward um, to. Uh, load the RVM function, uh, get everything in your path. And then here's the big one, and I'm probably not going to sit here and talk to you, whoops, uh, sit here and talk to you while this is going on. Uh, but here's installing RVM. Uh, this takes a while, uh, especially um, if you don't have a really fast computer, which I don't. Uh, I'm doing all this on a almost three-year-old, maybe two-and-a-half-year-old uh, MacBook Pro 13-inch. Uh, so it wasn't a super fast computer to begin with, and now it's really not a super fast computer. Uh, it does have eight gigs of memory in it, because I keep upgrading the memory, because memory is cheap and you can do that. But uh, it's running like a Core 2 Duo, like 1.8 or 2.0 gigahertz. Um, hell, we can find out. Uh, it's a 2.26 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. Um, and my host operating system, I am running 10.7.2. There was some weirdness before. People were uh, wondering about, you know, whether Lion had trouble on 10.7.2. Uh, there, ha there has been a lot of questions about uh, gen certs um, not working and producing a 0-byte ca.pem. Uh, that's fixed in the dev branch, and probably by the time you watch this video, it'll be fixed in the master branch uh, of Siri Proxy, but uh, that has to do with running an older version of OpenSSL. Uh, if you're running a version of OpenSSL prior to 1.0 that doesn't have a default message digest type, uh, then you get problems with the older versions, the non-development version at this point of Siri Proxy. So, okay, that was incredibly boring. Uh, so, uh, the next thing we do after we're done with that is um, set RVM to use 1.93. 1. 1.9.3 uh, 1. is the default, um, and currently. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's pretty straightforward what that's doing. Uh, and then... Uh, now we're grabbing uh, Siri Proxy from GitHub. We're just getting the main master branch. Uh, then we cd into the Siri Proxy directory, and we do a rake install. And here we're installing Siri Proxy, and this also takes a minute or two. It's also kind of boring. Okay, uh, we're back, and uh, next thing we do is create a... Uh, Siri proxy directory uh, in our home folder or in our home directory. So we do that and then we copy the uh, example config from the Siri proxy directory into the dot Siri proxy directory. Uh, finally, or almost finally, we generate the certificates. Um, if you see, if there are any errors with this, you'll see them up here. Uh, there probably won't be unless you're running an older version of OpenSSL. The version of OpenSSL I'm running on this is uh, 1.0.0e. Pretty much anything higher than 1.0, though, I think is uh, 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 will not have issues with the master branch. Um, so now we uh, go ahead and bundle Siri Proxy. 
Uh, there's a serial proxy command to do that. Um, and one more thing that I'm going to do here is uh, I am actually going to uh, I'm actually going to create or pop the ca.pem into my Dropbox. Uh, and the reason for this is in order to uh, get that, uh, in order to get it onto my iPhone, there's a whole lot of ways you can do this. Basically, all you got to do is find a way to get that ca.pem onto your iPhone. So, uh, this is just one way. Is I just put it on my Dropbox, and then I jump onto my iPhone, which is what I'm doing right now. And I paste in, or I, I get the URL of that file in my Dropbox. It's, you can see it's in my public folder in my Dropbox. I get a URL for it. And then I go ahead and put that URL into Safari. And it pops right up, and I can do an install. Um, it says unverified profile, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't, it's not nearly as scary as it should be. Uh, you got to put in your uh, passcode. Now it's trusted. I hit done. Uh, now I'm going to jump back in here and go ahead and do the final rvm sudo siri proxy server. And of course it requires my password one more time. Starting it. And here we go. Test Siri Proxy. Siri Proxy is up and running. And that's it. Thanks for watching.